Hello and welcome to another episode of Being Chat Before Bedtime. So in this episode I wanted to try out a few ideas that have been bouncing around in my head and, and do a mash-up. So in at least one previous video I'd mentioned about this site called Learn Prompting and over the course of last week into this week I've been systematically going through and trying these things out. Uh, I really enjoy this course and I would thoroughly recommend that if you want to get into prompt engineering this is an excellent place to start. And what I've been doing is taking these examples and you know th these are primarily designed to be used in GPT-3, GPT-4 chat GPT uh, and taking the examples and then running them in Bing chat. Now in some instances I'd had, had to tweak them. Some other things there's not always like a direct transfer um, but again you can do approximations that give you a rough idea of the sort of things to try out and it's just a fashion, fascinating exercise also, it does explain um, concepts as it goes along. So things like zero shot chain of thought. And you can see here we've got some samples to try. And again, you can try these out in you know, whatever uh, chatbot you have access to that uses the sort of foundation models that are used in um, GPT. So what happened was this morning, I got a bit behind. Um, last night I had a bit of an early night. And so this in some ways was more of a a being before breakfast actually. Maybe I should just change the, uh, the title to this video as a one-off. And I was, was going through this section on advanced applications uh, while I was just sort of sitting in bed. Um, getting ready for the day, listening to a, a podcast actually at the same time. And um, I'd got down to this bit and this fascinated me, code as reasoning. Now, there is one thing about this section is they are specifically talking about uh, miracle systems. So these modular reasoning, knowledge and language. Now, what these are is these are large language models with external tools bolted onto them. Now, of course, I'm using Bing Chat. I don't really have any control over the external tools. But some of the examples in here, particularly the code as reasoning, did fascinate me um, as, and also gave me ideas for things I wanted to try out. So in this example, it's specifically about something called few shot prompts and I don't know how easy it is to follow here but what's happening is you have a math prompt here which is where there's a series of mathematical questions just written out in English you know it's not written out as a mathematical expression and then there's a solution and there's three of those and they're all solutions in Python. And then f once that's been done, then there's the, there's the actual question itself. So what I thought I would do is take some of these examples and just try it without doing few shot prompting. So just see how Bing Chat behaves with these questions and I'll, sh I'll, I'll, I'll bring them across and I'll show you how I've slightly modified them. I already have them in a Word document. But the other thing I thought it would be a really good opportunity to work through the conversation styles for the four examples. So let's do that. So we're going to start off with the more precise. So 
what I've essentially done is taken that original question. So here's one. There were nine computers in the server room. Five more computers were installed each day from Monday to Thursday. How many computers are now in the server room? And then I've additionally asked it to generate Python code to calculate the answer. And this is the bit that interested me it is I found it's a really interesting way of working through um, mathematical problems. And so I'm curious as to how much, even though I've just said calculate the answer, how much the different conversation styles decide by their own sort of volition, if you like, to explain mathematically what's going on. So let's see. So we're, we're working from precise through to creative. So what I would expect to happen is that the explanations get more detailed. So we've got a good degree of terseness at this end and a good degree of explainability at this end. So let's see. So... So straight away it gives me the answer and then yeah there's a very simple uh, Python code or, or um, sample of Python code there. Now of course you can go on and further um, probe through the prompts this particular answer. So let's go to the next level down to more balanced and we will try this what we'll also do is we'll loop back round as a fourth test to the first one we did and just see whether we get the same sort of thing so this is interesting this is using um, from my understanding and it, it did come up the other day in another example I did. Um, there is LaTeX support now in um, Bing Chat. So you can see it's leveraging this as a bit more of an explanation mathematically. It's going to use arithmet arithmetic progression to calculate it. So this one's a little bit more involved. Still comes to the same. Oh, so this is fifty nine now. So, yeah, that's not uh, that's not correct. I'm not quite. Where's it gone wrong? Days installed divided by two. Common difference. Yeah, it doesn't seem appropriate. So, yeah, definitely. We now seem to have fifty nine computers in the server room. Although, is it? So it's five more computers are installed each day from Monday to Thursday. How many computers are now in the server room? Okay. So let's move on to the next one. More creative. Maybe it's going to get more creative with its answer. So with this particular version, the creative one, and this is something I've noticed, this is my go-to one if I'm wanting it to generate code generally because it puts comments in as well. But there's no explanation. But there is an option to explain the code. So let us loop back round. I think I'm going to do actually do a full second pass on this. I notice each time I'm I'm wiping its memory effectively. So 29 computers in the server room. 
We will now move on to more balanced. And see what type of calculation it prefers. So this is our second pass through. So it's again using arithmetic progression. And now it says there's 84 computers in the server room. Okay. That seems to be going up. So, yeah, don't use balance to, for this. <laughs> it's the, okay. <clears throat> I think this is the only one I'll do two passes on. Um, just cause it, once you've seen it, you get the gist. Okay, so it's stuck that in a for loop. So I am seeing a pattern here, um, going through twice. So first one, you get the tersest answer. Second one, you get this quite interesting mathematical one where it insists on using um, certain way of solving it and then with the last one it um, seems to be printing the code and then you do have the option to explain how the code works so I'm just going to try that so you can see what happens and then we'll do the next one So it's, it is explaining in context, which is good. Both in terms of what it's doing mathematically and um, why it's, you know, choosing certain syntax. No, I'm still confused. No, I won't do that. Right, so more precise. So now we move on to the next one, which is Sean has five toys. For Christmas, he got two toys each from his mum and dad. How many toys does he have now? And again, I keep this the same. Generate Python code to calculate the answer. You could, you know, obviously if you wanted an explanation as well, say generate Python code to calculate the answer and explain the answer if you wanted it to do that. I'm just seeing what it's going to do without specifically prompting it to do that. So and again, it's interesting to look at the follow up questions that it's suggesting. And this is something I definitely recommend is is to try the same question across all the different conversation styles multiple times. If, if you if you are having a particular problem with being chat where it doesn't seem to be behaving itself or it's hallucinating as I think they're calling it. Um, give it a try again and just see if you can work out where it's going wrong and just see if you can see a way of maybe improving the prompt and that'll fix it. Or maybe it doesn't make any difference. Oh, here we go. So this is interesting. So this one's pretty, uh, pretty terse. He didn't want to be doing any uh, convoluted maths there. So this one, oh, I don't want to know about thunderstorms. Nearly clicked that by mistake. So again, we got the benefit of comments, which is nice. And of course, the other thing I'm not doing here is um, sometimes it's interesting to copy paste out of here into a document and just see what additional um, referencing might be added. 
adding again it's not um yeah it's not incorporating the explanation automatically i have seen it do that once with just this question worded like this so but again if it's not on camera you know you can never guarantee it happened So we're on to the lollipop question now. Jason had 20 lollipops. He gave Denny some lollipops. Now Jason has 12. How many lollipops did Jason give Denny? So I have a degree of trepidation when we got onto the uh, the moderate, uh, the middle way in terms of uh, what it might attempt to do mathematically. We'll see. It may have settled down a bit. Eight lollipops. I'll oh, see now for this it is actually asking me to explain the code. I'm going to try it because I think this is the first time for this particular conversation style we've seen this. So let's see how it goes about this. Okay, again, I could have fun here. I, it's, it is fun to play around and see what other languages it can do it in. As, as you saw the other day, you can sit here for quite a while probing what it can program in and then getting it to offer up uh, solutions in different languages. I'm definitely, as a result of the video I did a few days ago, definitely encouraged to experiment in both Haskell, Haskell and Elm because they look so different from what I'm the sort of languages I'm used to programming in. <laughs> what if Jason had given away all his lollipops? Okay down to eight on this one so yeah that one was pretty straightforward. So the creative one Maybe it's going to ask me what flavour of a lollipop. Oh, okay. So interesting. Jason has twenty. Then he has zero. Remaining is 12 and then it does the calculation. But it doesn't... Okay, it's not actually run it. Um, hmm. So yeah, I'm seeing a bit of... Not quite as... Um, explanatory as previous times when we've done this particular co conversation style but looking at the math there it does look like it would come out correctly because it's got 20 minus 12 equals Denny which is currently zero before this and then it should put eight in there so let me just go can you check if the code is correct Is it going to redirect me to uh, and say you need to run this in uh, some sort of online Python compiler? Okay, it's going to do that. Huh. Here you can copy paste it in. Oh, there you go. If the code is correct, it should print JSON gave eight poly. Okay, so there we go. We got there in the end. And finally, 
this one, which was the run I, one I have run on several occasions, although not across all of the conversation styles. And it's interesting because it has an option here to do a number of things, either display it in minutes in total or to do hours and minutes. So if it does hours and minutes, it's going to be three hours 30. If it does it all in minutes, then what's that? 210 because it's 180 for these two plus 30. It should be 210. So we'll see. I've also seen it get it wrong once because, like I said, this is the one I've played around most with. Two hundred ten. Okay, good. You can even go how many hours is two hundred ten minutes? So we'll move to more balanced and. run that. I was going to do a mashup actually but I don't think I was like you know Emma taking the uh, the trip but also at the same time giving out lollipops. <laughs> That's homework okay. Two hours and Two hours and thirty minutes, did I? No, okay. Okay, so Seattle to Vancouver. Okay, so it's not including the first bit. Interesting. Hang on, plane ride. What is it doing there? So the code looks correct. So it's plane ride plus train ride plus bus ride, which is 60 plus 120 plus 30 which is with 3 hours 30 but then it's choosing to ignore the plane ride even though yeah that's interesting let's come back to that one So it looks like the one we're having most problems with, one way or another, is this balanced one, interestingly enough. Now again, of course, we haven't done any sort of shot training or shot prompting before this point to, you know, mathematically prime it. ourselves so so yeah three hours and thirty minutes to get to Vancouver so in this one yeah it's definitely breaking it down into hours and minutes by doing some fancy schmancy things with the uh, with integer division and modular operator the other way I've seen it do it uh, is using one time it actually used a library to do it so let's go back to balance here because I'm curious about this And then we'll probe it a little more, see if we can get it to correct itself without too much work. Yeah, 
Yep, still insists on doing it. Damn it, took a 60 minute. Time it took for each leg of the journey. Yeah, still coming out to hours and 13 minutes. Yeah, it's still coming out to hours and 30 minutes. That's better. Okay, so that's interesting. So now it's correctly calculated it. Yeah, so beware the middle way, I would say. So thanks once again for watching. Bye for now. And I'll catch you in the next video.